Hey everybody, this is Kevin for another episode of Lazy Literature. In my previous episode, I highly recommended that you read Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. However, I still stand by my original suggestion that you should take the remaining two books in Ken Follett's King's Bridge Trilogy and throw them out the window, or maybe just not read them if you're not as dramatic as I am. Instead, I would highly recommend that you take a look at the read from this episode. In this episode, I highly recommend that you read The End of the Myth from the Frontier to the Border Wall in the Mind of America by Greg Grandin. Greg Grandin is currently a professor of history at Yale, and he has also written several other books. My favorite of his writings up until this point, until I read The End of the Myth, was called Fordlandia. I liked it because he took a look at a big abstract concept such as labor, particularly in the automotive factories of Henry Ford, and he gave readers an in-depth look at what life was really like for those workers. And the reason I like The End of the Myth by Greg Grandin is that he takes a look at this big abstract concept like the American frontier and he breaks it down and he does a great job in his writing showing the reader what are the effects in American society of embracing this notion of the frontier even after the frontier is mostly gone in a physical sense. Because if you think about it, the frontier is an expression and a term that we use all the time. Whenever we have something that we don't know much about it, or if there's any area of our interest that we haven't explored, all of a sudden it's the frontier. We refer to space as the final frontier because we're just exploring these different parts of it because it's so vast and we don't know nearly as much as we want to know. And for science and medicine, whenever we have a big breakthrough or a discovery, you can typically hear people say or read, well, this is a new frontier for science and medicine. And while this term may be accurate in the way that we use it in our language, Greg Grandin points out that there's a complicated history of the frontier in American society. And what I really like about his writing is that at the end of the end of the myth, he does a great job of bringing up this new question to ask readers, well, the physical frontier as we know it is pretty much done. We've explored almost every single thing that we've wanted to explore on the earth. And especially for the country of America, we defined our national identity against the frontier for so long. Now that our frontier is over, filled, fully explored, what's going to happen next? If we don't have this concept, this abstract, this place of the frontier for us to go to, like we always have. And Greg Grandin does a great job of taking the history of the United States and explaining the importance and relationship to the frontier from the colonization of America all the way to the present day in just under 300 pages. And in doing so, he analyzes it, the way we portray it, the way we use it in our language, but also, most importantly, the effects of us doing that. And for these effects, there's two things that stood out to me that I really like about his writing. He makes a good point of explaining to readers that when you have a frontier to rely on when you have this unexplored area land part of your country it's almost like you can always move outward and away 
from civilization and society to a place to where you can do whatever you want. And I think this is a part of the way we treat certain people in America and the way certain groups have been historically disenfranchised. Specifically in this analysis, Native Americans and African Americans. And when we think about the frontier in American history and you get past the romantic image of the frontier of settlers and explorers on the Oregon Trail or cowboys in the Wild West, the frontier is very problematic. And when you're always exploring outward, you get to dehumanize people because if they were humans, they would be back with society and civilization. They're just animals in the wilderness. So you don't really need much of a justification or a rationalization for what you want to do to them and what we did do to them. Uh, on this topic, Greg Grandin goes in pretty deep on Andrew Jackson and I think it's well deserved. Andrew Jackson is absolutely a figure of American history who embraced the frontier, but ultimately the effects of him embracing the frontier is that he used it to disenfranchise, dehumanize Native Americans. And also with this history in slavery, African Americans. And once that concept of the frontier was ingrained in the American cultural identity, it never really went away, even as we explored everything we wanted to explore and we made our way across the country until what we have today in the United States and particularly the continental United States. And this brings me to the second point I would like to make about this reading and ultimately uh, main part of why I recommend this book so much is that currently at this time in history in 2020, the frontier is it's kind of over besides space and technology and medicine or just as a function of figurative language. We've explored almost everything we want to explore on this earth. And while we don't have the frontier to rely on anymore, it's almost like we finally have to deal with the effects of the frontier. We have to deal with the ways colonizers and Americans have treated and interactive, interacted with Native Americans. And we have to come to terms with the fact that when you disenfranchise and dehumanize groups of people over years and years throughout history, there are going to be lasting effects for their place in our society. And I don't have too much more to say about the end of the myth from the frontier to the border wall in the mind of America because I can't do it justice like Greg Grandin can do it justice. I highly recommend that you read The End of the Myth. It's pretty fast, just under 300 pages, and it also provides a very good bibliography and works cited. So you can also take a look at some of the texts, research, and other readings Greg Grandin did in order to cite and put his writing together. This is a great nonfiction book and throughout this video series I'm going to be talking about some other great nonfiction books as I choose them and as I read them. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Take a look next Monday for my next episode. In the following episode I'm going back to fiction. I have a very good zombie novel, Zone 1 by Colson Whitehead that I can't wait to talk about. Have a good day, everybody.